The original machine had a base plate of prefamulated amulite surmounted by a malleable logarithmic casing in such a way that the two spurving bearings were in a direct line with a panometric fan. Yes, that was once me, extolling the virtues of retroencabulation. Now, I may not be the dashing young on-camera narrator I once was, but if history tells me anything, it's that the Battle of Hastings was fought in 1066. But that's not the point. The point is that encabulation has a rich, sumptuous history with a delicate, flaky crust, relatively unknown to emergent cybersecurity personnel. Allow me to elucidate. The discovery of encabulation was quite accidental. When engineers in the Skunk Works at Mutual Polydynamics coupled a transcendental hopper datoscope with a spiral decommutator via the application of anhydrous nangling pins, resulting in a device that allowed frenetic mastication at alarming speeds. The device was kept secret for many years, owing to the horrific accident that occurred shortly after its inception. Howsoever, the U.S. Compartment of Offense and the Natural Guard soon realized its potential as a weapon of choice, leading to its next iteration, the Hydroencabulator, which they nicknamed Fat Boy Slim. Understanding the grisly bare fact of the devastation that would result from its deployment, the project was retubed and transmogrified for industrial supplications. This version, known as the pseudo-encabulator, was the infernal Faustian engine that allowed post-war America to realize its aspirations and become the domino player on the world stage. Everybody was encabulating. I don't understand you. Well, I knew you wouldn't, but if I'd have told you before, the answer meter on the other side perennulates the canoe to spell happiness, and that's the entire secret. There you have it. During the tumultuous 60s, the psycho-funkadelic vinyl encabulator emerged as the long-haired hippie people's answer to their parents' aging technology, scarving a resonance groove in the hot wax of a new generation of encabulators. However, interest in encabulation waned precipitously until the late 80s, when the public was ready for the next transubstantiation of encabulation, the extraordinarily populist turbo encabulator. Now basically the only new principle involved is that instead of power being generated by the relative motion of conductors and fluxes, it is produced by the modial interaction of magneto-reluctance and capacitive directance. Which brings us to where we are today, floundering in the wake of the obscenely similar retro encabulator, featuring yours truly, living proof that leveraging existing assets is not plagiarism. Now, despite encabulation's unparalleled success in reducing sinusoidal deplenoration through advanced dingle alarm technology, it has failed to meet the unanticipated needs of the cybersecurity industry to create zero trust operations in level zero monitoring environments to ameliorate zero day process attacks. That is why, despite zero interest from industry, the SANS ICS security team has taken it upon themselves to develop an entirely new level of encabulation, unresponsive to the needs of the average consumer and undoubtedly without merit in terms of concomitant asynchronous communication with client-side connectivity. Ladies and gentlemen, ISACs of all sectors, beer included, and children of all ages, may I present the Hyperencabulator. The hyperencabulator is nothing less than a key ruminant in the advancement of retrograde phenomenology by which we can achieve results that are plastic, spastic, and sinosynclastic without sacrificing both normative reality and AI-informed modalities. You'll note that the hyperencabulator utilizes indiscrete modules, making possible virtualized environments that include PLC-controlled stand-up reheaters, as well as retinium-based cloud benders. It also includes a dedicated OT Security Operations Center access panel, known as the sock drawer. The primary modules of the hyperencabulator are stackable, din rackable, and unhackable. And please note the complete absence of side fumbling, owing to the maintenance of tolerances allowing a tight conniption fit. Please take little note of this module. The open source digital ghost daemon, which allows transparent OT invisibility owing entirely to the manipulation of airborne particulate matter and single surface reflective devices. Or, for criminal infrastructure sectors where the dependability of supramative Wendelsprox is essential, 
Our handsome ransomware hypervisor is perpetually alert to SQL injections of Gates tracking chips and quantum IoT identification dots. Moreover, whenever a pen test is elected to assure the integrity of a safety instrumented system, our Purdue model modal module defeathers and plucks clean every proverbial fox in the hen house and keeps would-be intruders wondering which metaphor got mixed first. As you can see, the hyperencabulator has reached a high level of development. Whereas previous dissimilar devices operated under the concept of manumatic stressor reduction and macroeconomic supply chain S-bombs, the hyperencabulator operates totally under the principle of colonic effluvium expulsion and audible gaseous eructations. Thomas Edison once said that invention was 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. If that's the case, Thomas Edison should have invented deodorant but I regress. In the near future, hyperencabulation will ultimately replace all traditional cybersecurity safeguarding processes with osculating segmentation and entropic astrogation, making what was once thought to be impossible, probable. At SANS ICS Security, when we're not innovating, we're encabulating. <laughs>